Thanks. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Meet Our Members episode. Today we're on episode seven, and I'm here with Rebecca Norton, who is uh, who's been in the group for a while now. I met Rebecca in March, I think it was, um, as she was as she was presenting a talk at a Soul Link event, and that was geared around well-being and five ways to well-being from memory, and so. Um, Rebecca was sharing a little bit about her own well-being journey and how she helps others to find that in their own life and also query in themselves how they actually find well-being amongst their busy lives and the things that they've got going on. Because today we're living in such a crazy, busy, chaotic time. And I think it's important yeah. to find those those moments of, of inner well-being, whatever it looks like for the individual. So Rebecca's going to share a bit today about that, how her own journey and how she's how she's got into that and also the work that she's doing with people. So as always, I'm going to hand over and just let Rebecca share. So thank you, Rebecca. Welcome. And thanks for being here. Thank you very much for the for the invitation to to come and share. And um, I love this group because it's such a mix of people in there, you know, and, and everybody's got that a, a desire, I think, to have that good well-being and stuff. And, and well-being is, as you mentioned, it's really important to me. And I'm I'm not perfect myself yet either. Um, you know, it's still a, a, a journey for me to to improve and work on. And actually, last week I had a full week of things on, and I ended up getting to bed later than I do normally on several times during during the week. And actually, I felt wiped out this weekend, and that was a really good reminder to me that it's so important that we look after our own well being because otherwise, it does show up in different ways. And I think. Um, something that I've been reflecting on and just mentioned to you before we got started was that, you know, we all seem to have a desire in this group around that curiosity and that learning and development and stuff. And, and I got into that quite young, really, I suppose. I was uh, around about probably 18, 19. Somebody told me about a book called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Susan Jeffers. Classic book. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. It was that to me, I suppose, was was life changing to some extent. Um, and it just introduced this new world to me about this personal development and, and growth and stuff. And I think that in combination with the fact that I went on Camp America that summer as well, I did the Camp America program. And um, that, again, was a life changing experience. I'd never been away from home for maybe more than a night or two and certainly, certainly never traveled abroad on my own. I was horrendously homesick the first week, but after that, that was it. And that's when I got my travel book as well. So I think in combination of doing that experience and reading that book, it, it really opened up my eyes to a whole new world out there. And uh, I've been hooked on personal growth and development ever since, really. And um, I'm one of those people. School was all right. You know, a lot of people say, oh, our school was the best days of our lives and everything. It wasn't for me. I had I have no desire of going back to school <laughs> and reliving those school days. Um, but since school, I've been in and out of education for years. You know, formally, informally, I uh, I did. I went to college and university, and then um, a, a year or two after that, I <laughs> I started on my outdoor education um, qualification, and um, and that was partly because I've been introduced to an organisation and interviewed for them and I didn't um I realized that actually I wasn't at a point where I felt I could give the best to that role and thought actually I'm quite interested in this outdoor ed stuff though so I went off and, and did two years training in that and I've always been um you know I've always loved the outdoors we've been quite an outdoorsy sort of family we went on mountain bike rides and outside all the time I used to love playing in the garden as well I had a lot of imaginative play as a child either building dens or running my own little cafe from the garden shed and you know stuff like that I loved being outdoors and and I did my Duke of Edinburgh at school as well I did my bronze silver and gold Duke of Edinburgh awards um, so the outdoors has always played a big role in my life and, and what I do I've always enjoyed it and I think gradually as I've got older and especially having done the the outdoor ed course um I just really saw the power in being outdoors in nature it, it just brought me so much joy but also I think we think so much clearer when we're outdoors for me there's something about that physical space around us that gives us that mental space to process things and, and what have you as well and um 
since I've got into coaching about seven years ago, that that was one of the reasons I wanted to get into coaching was because I wanted people to be able to access some of that joy that I got from being outdoors and that sense of feeling alive. But also I just found that my my thoughts or any sort of concerns I had would untangle while I was out walking. You know, I don't know whether you ever felt this yourself where you felt quite stressed or hit up and you go for a walk and you, you're sort of power walking almost at first and you can just feel that. And then gradually it just sort of melts off you. It dissolves and, and you can slow down and you start engaging in the surroundings a little bit more and you start to notice the, the nature, you know, and I, gradually as I got older, I noticed that more and more whenever I'm out on a walk. I'm always seeing different things. It might be a bird or or I might hear something or I see a colour. And I've really learned to engage my senses a lot more when I'm out walking. And I love being able to share that with with my clients. So whether that's through coaching on a one-to-one basis, I've done some group coaching outdoors. And then um, when I first set up my business, I was doing something what I called wonder walks as well. So I would do these once a month where we would just go out to enjoy the walk, enjoy each other's company and go in different places and stuff. So I've always loved the outdoors and, it, and it's brought me a sense of pleasure and, and joy. It's also been a great way to relieve stress, to meet people, because there's something I think about walking side by side. When you're out on a walk, I think it's so much easier to open up with people because we're not, you know, often in that traditional sort of environment of where you're looking at directly at each other. That can feel quite intimidating sometimes, I think, where when you're side by side, there's a lovely, it's a different flow and and you can get distracted by the scenery and that can provide inspiration. And again, that's something that I've really started tapping into more in this last year or two is really seeing the inspiration from the outdoors um, and the metaphors for life. So May is National Walking Month and and this year I ran um, a couple of events. So one was, um, what were they called? So the wisdom of trees, you know, and actually when we're walking through woods or any group of trees, they're all different, the different shapes and sizes, you know, they're at different stages in their growth and development. But none of them compare each other. You know, they don't compare each other. Of, well, I'm better than you or I'm bigger than you or whatever. And there's so much wisdom we can take from our surroundings. And I did a, a walk around um, a local cemetery as well. And I just think I didn't want it to be a morbid experience. I wanted people to, again, to get that those metaphors for life from, from that. You know, again, we all end up transitioning out of this life it doesn't matter how good or bad or whatever we did in life we all end up going the same way so how do we make the most of our time while we're here and so I love being able to tap into the metaphors and the inspiration I get from the outdoors and and again that sort of influences a lot of the work that I do um sorry that was a very potted history and (laughs) um, a very sort of roundabout way of, of explaining where I've got I suppose in in some respects um but there's something else that sticks out to me because like I said before I I went in and out of education so after I did my outdoor ed thing I decided that um I'd go back and do my teacher training I I love I love training people I love sharing that wisdom and knowledge with other people so I did my teacher training in in lifelong learning um and I and I dabbled in teaching for a little while and I say it like that because um I only did it part-time and I did it in a couple of colleges in completely different contexts, actually. And although I enjoyed working with the students, I didn't like the environment. I didn't like being in that very formal educational setting. Um, and there was a lot of restrictions and paperwork side of it and having to get students through a qualification, regardless of how much effort they put in or what they'd done or whatever. And it just it didn't sit well with me. Um, So I decided that formal education was not for me. So I I still love delivering workshops and trainings, but I do it on my own terms now and stuff. So so I went off and so I'd done my teacher training. Then I got into first aid training for a while and I was delivering first aid training for on a freelance basis for for a number of years. I've only recently given that up, actually. Then um, after that, I I got into the life coaching and I've been I have I think I found my thing with the life coaching. (laughs) finally found my thing because it brings together all my different experiences in life and being able to share that my love for learning and growth and things um and 
it, it's just I, I love the ethos around it in that forward development so it's not counseling and it's not therapy but it can be therapeutic um doing that and you know at, at one point when I was doing these different courses and, and training and stuff I just all that would be in my head and what you know every now and then people would mention would say about a jack of all trades now I didn't know the full saying so the only bit I knew after that was a jack of all trades master of none and I just thought you know I'm a jack of all trades master of none until recently I think it was only this year I've, I've got this in front of me so I'm going to read it somebody gave me the full saying a jack of all trades is a master of none but oftentimes better than a master of one and I thought oh I like that and I and somebody else had helped me reframe that as a you know a lady of many talents because I used to see myself moving from one thing to the next thinking why can't I just stick at one thing and just you know really concentrate on it but I've always been curious I love doing lots of different things and actually now I see that as a real advantage being able to be flexible and adaptable to different things and bringing that that mix of experience to people and hopefully being able to share with other people who are perhaps experiencing some, something similar. I think, you know, when young people are at school and college, they're often encouraged to think, well, what do you want to do afterwards? What, what career do you want to go into? What profession? And actually, I don't think we always know at that age. And I want to reassure people that you don't have to know and that you can sort of try different things and what have you. There's a lot more people who are sort of following that what's called a portfolio career where they're doing different things you know so I still combine things now I'm, I'm not just um have my own business as a life coach I also work part-time as well in, in a what I call a regular job um, where I get paid holidays and pension and things like that um but I think there's a place for everyone and what they bring is actually a really wonderful experience and, and I know somebody else was saying this in in one of your uh interviews that it's a two-way process so although I might be the life coach and helping people I gain a lot from that experience myself as well and it's such a lovely way to help other people and so rewarding as well I think so I love what I do and that that's sort of one of my joys is helping other people feel empowered about where they are in life um I think sometimes we are living in quite challenging circumstances at the minute and it can feel like a lot of things are out of our control but there is a lot of things that we can control and I want to be able to help people take back some of that sense of ownership as well you know there's sometimes we have this sense of entitlement well the world owes me this and you know I should be able to get this on the NHS and I should be able to access that but we have to we have to take ownership and we have to take some responsibility for our own well-being as well and, and that's where this links with the well-being is you know if, if we put a load of crap in our bodies then we're probably not going to feel the best and should we really be expecting somebody else to fix us you know and, I, and I'm not saying that lightly and I, and I know there's lots of different reasons why people get to that but I want to help people see that they can change a lot of things themselves um, by some of the habits that they you know do themselves looking after themselves get eating well moving regularly and and there's something around the mental well-being side of it as well you know and gabe there's so much on social media and depending on what you choose to engage in can be really uplifting or it can be really negative as well and again we have a choice over that we don't have to engage in the negative side of things we can consume positive stuff or things that's more you know in alignment with who we want to be so I suppose in some respect, they have quite a holistic approach in, in helping people see what are their habits that they engage in and what can they tweak to help them lead a life that's in alignment with what they want to be and who they want, you know, how they want to feel as well. Um, yes. All right. I will pause for breath. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it was really lovely to listen to that. It sounds like you've had a lot of experiences and uh found your 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 own little stream of 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 uh, what get, what brings you joy and what gives you excitement and and been able to actually follow that whilst keeping stuff on the side to make sure that you can develop it and grow in the way that you want to grow so that you're always you know because I, I know a lot of people like you were saying it, it's difficult sometimes to 
to, to, to really follow our passion because we think we've got to fit into some kind of mold of yeah. well, I've got to do this job I've got to get this career I've got to decide what I want to do and so that kind of that kind of pressures people into thinking that, that they need to make a quick choice yeah. and, then, and then it and it kind of blocks them then from seeing where their real interest is and how they can make that part of their life still because it's possible to follow your passion uh, and even if you can't make money out of it straight away to still have it there in your life so that you can develop yeah. it in your own way and I think a lot of people think it's got to be an all or nothing approach. I'm either working in an office job that I really hate or I'm going to be an artist and I'm going to make no money. So what's the, do you know what I mean? But there is a, it's possible to do both, isn't it? And and find ways to actually expand into really what you're really passionate about. And so um, I was I was thinking when you were talking initially about nature uh, and how, you know, you've, you've been able to look at nature in a very metaphorical way. And, and I think that that's one of the reasons that we all, we all love nature, isn't it? Is because we can find ourselves very easily in it. We can we can look at a tree and we can say, how do I? How can I compare myself to this tree and, and understand how it works and how I work and not just trees but anything in nature really. And I think yeah. there's such there's such a powerful reflection in that because nature just does itself effortlessly, and we're always trying to do ourselves with a lot of control and, and manipulation. And so it's a good reminder just to let go and just to go with the flow and be in the rhythm. And I know that rhythm. Is something that you talk a lot about in the work. So, are you when you're when you're taking people out in nature? Is that what you're trying to encourage them to do? Is to be able to look at the different aspects and relate themselves to that in some way? Yeah, definitely. Because, like you said, and that letting go, trees let go in autumn. You know, yeah. the leaves will drop, and it's time to let go. And there's that cyclical nature as well. I think um, in nature, in in terms of there is a period of growth, there is a period of hibernation, there is a period of just flourishing, and we go through that. And it and it might not be the same in terms of a whole year, but we go through seasons of that, and we might go through seasons in we might go through several seasons in in the space of a couple of months with within that. And I think it's helping people just look at the bigger picture I think sometimes we get so caught up in what's going on in the moment and again this is another wonderful metaphor that I use when we're out walking um so I do a day retreat for women four times a year and we, we tap into the seasons but we do the same walk each time because it's nice to be able to see the season change so we're looking at the same view but we see it at a different period of time so it looks very different but one of the, the things I get people to work, we're up on a sort of ridge overlooking the village. And I help people to try and remember that, that when you're experiencing something quite challenging or difficult and you're stuck in the middle of it, it's really difficult to see a way out. When you take a bigger picture and you're higher up and you can look from above, you can see, actually, there's a few different options. Well, we could take that road there or we can take that road there. And oh, I see how it all fits together we literally change our perspective and we can see it in a different way. So, you know, there's so many metaphors and I love being able to do that with people and helping them say, if you're in a situation where you're feeling stuck, is either literally or metaphorically, try and take a step back, look at it from a different angle. Let's see what's really going on. What are our options? You know, there's always options in whatever situation we're in. So let's have a look and see if we can see that from a different perspective so the yeah nature is wonderful at just offering us different viewpoints of the world because it's not personal is it and that's and i think that's such a key element to be able to move forward in, in challenging times is, is to be able to see see the personal and the impersonal simultaneously you know or look at something multidimensionally as you say from above and below to yeah. be able to see yes i'm in this right now but if i wasn't if i wasn't just me with my own opinions and beliefs what else is available you know and actually opens up so many other options and so I think that again why nature is such a beautiful uh, uh, influence or, or, or inspiration is because it offers us an impersonal view of well no matter what happens I'm going to drop my leaves in autumn because I know I, have, I know I have to and so it's a calling for us to say well at some point I've got to let this go so yeah. why can't I just let it go today what's stopping me doing what's stopping today being that day so fantastic yeah thank you yeah. And, um, and so you, when you, when you're doing workshops what what does that look like are you are you helping people find their their own path into their own unique expression of well-being or, or what, what does that look like um I, I tailor workshops depending on a on a different so i've offered workshops i should say on a number of different things but one that i'm sort of currently um 
doing it's called rhythm or keep your rhythm so you mentioned rhythm before and that that's it's a model that i developed called rhythm and it stands for relationships habits your purpose time health and mindset so i've been running that and it's i've been doing it as a as a monthly program and each month we've looked at a different topic a different one of those letters basically so yeah helping people to find their own rhythm what so i believe that if we can get those elements and, and look at those elements and how we incorporate them into our life, we're likely to be able to find a lot more fulfillment. It's a lot less stressful. We can find our own natural rhythm. You know, there's everybody talks about this work life balance. And I, I think <laughs> it is quite elusive. You know, it's, it's not 50, 50 or 60, 40 or whatever. I don't think it's as clear cut as that. Life has a natural rhythm to it. And I think sometimes we will get busier and it will quite will feel quite stressful. But then other times it will slow down and things will relax. And we need to be able to enjoy that flow a little bit. And if we understand that there is a rhythm to it, and, and like you said, we can let go of some of the other things and the need for things, then again, we can just enjoy that journey a little bit more and, and find it a lot more um, rewarding, I think, as well, knowing and, and seeing... So I always encourage people to try and um, see the lessons available to us from these situations. There's always things we can learn from them. And even if they're very uncomfortable at the time, with a little bit of hindsight and a little bit of time to sort of reflect, we can often see there's something that we can learn from that. We can take something from that experience. And if we use that to go forward, then we'll, you know, it'll help us in other situations. And, you know, there will always be challenges in life. There will always be problems to overcome. And, you know, hopefully the idea is that we get more skillful and more experienced at dealing with them, you know. And um, there's a couple of people that I've come across and, and said this. So somebody who I've followed quite a lot over the last few years is, is Peter Sage. And he, you know, he always called it the school of life. And the thing is, we will keep getting the same lessons over and over again until we learn the lesson and what we're meant to take from it. It might just show up in a different way. You know, if we if we struggle with relationships, then we'll still get the same sort of problems coming up, but with a different partner. And until we learn what we're meant to learn from that, it will just keep showing up. So if we can sit down and reflect and, and take lessons from that, hopefully we learn quicker and we move on to the next challenge. You know, <laughs> the, yeah, the, there's there's so many things that we can, I think this is, you know, we've talked about this as well, is that there is such a busy pace of life and sometimes it's really difficult. We just move from one thing to the next to the next and we don't take time to savour what's going on or process what's going on and we miss out on some of these opportunities. So. By and I love this group for that, you know, in, in terms of the people that you can meet and opening you up to different ideas and other people's beliefs and things is is a really lovely way to expand your own view of the world as well, you know, and experience different things. Yeah. Yeah, lovely. And I think that 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 um you know that 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 the idea of rhythm is such a powerful one because it is something, it is a law that the whole of creation operates under. There is a rhythm to everything and, and you'll find it in every single thing from the atom up, you know. And so when we when we trust in that that process of rhythm, then we know that wh wherever we're in our winter, there is spring will always follow. And it might, and as you say, it might not be tomorrow. It might be that we're in our winter for quite a while, but um that we, we if we if we know for a fact that spring follows winter then we also know that in so at somewhere at some point some way or another we are going to be moved into a more uh flourishing time in our life and it's it's about allowing that process to be what it needs to be and understanding that there are going to be options available if we open ourselves up to them rather than just saying oh i'm in this and it's this way now this is my life and i'm stuck in it because nature doesn't work like that we don't have a choice but to move forward and to to go through the rhythms and so if we trust in that process then we we know that it's going to happen so we can actually participate now in, in our own way so i think that's a beautiful way to be to be guiding people in that sense because yeah. it's something that we have to go through so and yeah. it reminds me of the saying this too shall pass you yeah. know so wherever we are i think that's a really good reminder that one if it if what you're going through at the minute is not great, it will pass and it will change. 
but also equally if you're experiencing something that's really joyful savor it and enjoy it because it will pass you know but I think that that phrase works both ways beautifully as a reminder to you know to be present in the moment but to be reminded that it's not going to last forever yeah. well life is a wave isn't it and so you know we have to a rising tide will lift all ships but also a receding tide will pull all the ships down as well but so we get a choice to walk the middle path the whole time and not get caught up in the highs which can burn us out yeah. or those which can which can drain us as well you know so it's it's about finding that harmony isn't it in the center and i think when we get stuck in those patterns as you talked about again you can see that very archetypally and say well i'm in this pattern of of victimhood or or woundedness or whatever it is right now and, and with that pattern comes a certain type of language a certain type of behavior which is uh, is synonymous with that pattern the archetype but it's it's just a pattern and if i can start to see how the pattern works of well this is the narrative that you know woe is me whatever i can start to see it very impersonally and say i'm just speaking the language of a pattern and i can choose to break that cycle whenever i'm ready and nature will always find a way to push me off that pattern because it's getting a bit exhaustive or whatever. So it's about, there's a lot of faith that comes with it, isn't there? That we will we will always get moved back into our natural rhythm. And the less we fight it, the, the better, the easier it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, and the more enjoyable it is as well. I think, like you said, if you know that thing, you know, if, if things are not great for you and you have this trust and this faith that things will get better, I think you can relax a little bit more into it, can't you? And, and it relieves some of that stress and that pressure on us. It's like, okay, I'm going through this, but I know it's going to get better. So I'm just going to keep going with the things that nourish me. I think that's the other thing, isn't it? You know, and taking time out for ourselves um, is so important as well. And surrounding yourself with the right people. And you don't have to do these things alone either. I think that's the other thing is if you're struggling is, is reach out, reach out to the right people, but there's always going to be somebody else there who can help you along this or or share that journey with you, you know, to just keep you going through it as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's it. And that's, you know, that's what we're all really here for, isn't it? To, to be the guides and the light and the way shows for, for everybody else. And uh, whether it's through a, an uncomfortable encounter or whether it's through someone that's coming to your life to offer guidance, it's still really a guidance because it's yeah. showing you parts of yourself. And like you said, if, you, if you're in a bit of a low ebb um, and you know that that will not last, then you can actually relax into it a little bit because what's the rush? Why do I need to sort it out today? You know, I think sometimes it's very easy when we go into those lower moods or feeling, un uh, no, you know, not very good that we have to rush to get out of it. Mm. But in that, we often miss the wisdom that comes from the experience. And so I think if we know that we're eventually going to get out of it anyway, then we can start to move more gently through it and say, well, what is this really about? What am I here to understand? And, and how can I work with this experience to learn more about me and everything else rather than just trying to escape? Yeah, yeah, yeah very much so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So have you got any workshops? Are you, you, are you running anything at the moment or what's, what's coming up for you? Yeah, so we've got uh, Joy in Summer. Um, which is a day retreat for women on Sunday the 28th of July and joy stands for journey of you that's something that is part of that you know and, and why would you on a seasonal basis so it's me and a lady called Femka Williams who are running that um, and that's a mix of watercolour paint and the the walk and a delicious lunch as well you know and, and we we explore different topics each time so the next one is around confidence we'll be exploring that theme of confidence what does it mean to us individually and how can we cultivate more of it how are we how do we show up when we haven't got as much confidence as we would like so that sort of thing and then a new collaboration with a lady called Kirsty who is a counsellor and, and specialises in sort of grief and mental health we're putting a workshop on in September around life and loss so we're looking at some of the practical elements of of sort of that loss and bereavement but also some of the things that we can take from life so some of the things that we've just been talking about now in terms of how can we save a life how can we be present in the moment and enjoy it you know life doesn't last forever so how do we how do we enjoy it while we're here sort of things so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that and then my next rhythm workshop will be starting in um, September. That's an online uh, course that runs over, over six months. We just meet online once a month for, for six months. So that's starting in September. So I've got, yeah, looking forward to a few different things there. All right. Yeah, no, that's great. I think it's, it's good to hear there's lots in the pipeline. And, and obviously we can include a, 
some links to some of that stuff in the in the notes for this episode as well. Um, so I think we'll we'll start wrapping it up there. But I just wanted to know before we say goodbye, what is your favourite experience in nature? Where where do you put yourself when you're having the most fun in nature? Is it the beach? Is it the woods? Is it? Oh, um, they all bring different things. But I have to say, I do love going to the coast. I love walking along a beach. Or yeah, there's nothing like the feeling of sand beneath in between your toes. Yeah. Mm. Definitely. Well, it's perfect time of year for it. Now the sun's been blessing us, and uh, and I've been yeah. feeling the beach today. So I'm hopefully going to try and get there next week with the dog. So yeah. hopefully we get some nice summer weather so we can all flourish, as as you say. And uh, it's been lovely to chat to you. Thank you so much for your time today. And um, as I said, we'll post some links for some of your stuff in the in the notes as well. And uh, obviously a link to your to your page if anyone wants to get in touch. So thank you very Brilliant. much. Thank you, David. All right. Bye. Bye.